Hi there and welcome to Penguin Learning. In this National Full Maths lesson, we will be looking at something called Common Factor Factorising. From this lesson, you will learn how to transform an expression from one with brackets into no brackets and vice versa. You will understand what is the process of factorising and how we do this. You will then learn how to identify the highest common factor between two terms in an expression. And then finally, we are going to go over some examples to give you a proper understanding on how to carry out factorising. So, let's get started. Ooh la la. So, from some of our previous lessons, we've learned that in order to get rid of these set of brackets, what we must do is multiply the term on the outside of the bracket with each term inside the bracket. So for this example, that would mean multiplying 4 by x and also 4 by 3. So for example, we could say that it would be 4 times x plus 4 times 3. And we know that if we do 4 times 3, then that is equal to 12. But here's a question. What if we want to put an expression like this one without any brackets back into the form where we have brackets? Because sometimes in maths, when we go to solve problems in the real world, sometimes it's better to have an expression in this form, and sometimes it's better to have it in this form. So it's important that we know how to multiply out the brackets to get it in this form, but then also put it back into brackets to get it back to this. And the process of going to an expression without brackets to one with brackets is called factorising. So if you think about it before, when we were multiplying out the bracket, what we would do, we would end up with this, and this was the answer to that question. But now imagine we are starting with the answer and we have to work back to what the original question was by putting it back into brackets. And once again, this is called factorising. And the reason that it's called factorising, because what we do is, in order to get this into that, we have to look for a common factor between each of the variables within the expression. And a common factor is just simply a number that can be divided into two different numbers. So for example, we could say that the number two and the number four would have a common factor of two because two can be divided by two, which would give us one, and four can be divided by two, which would give us two. So that means we can say that two and four have a common factor of two. We could also say that two and four have a common factor of 1. And that's the same with all whole numbers because anything that's a whole number can be divided by 1. So for example, 2 can be divided by 1, which will give us 2, and 4 divided by 1, which will just give us 4. So therefore, 2 and 4 have common factors of both 1 and 2. Now what about 3 and 9? Well, we know that 3 can be divided by 3 and that will give us a whole number. So 3 divided by 3 would just equal 1. And also 9 divided by 3 would give us 3. So we can say that 3 and 9 have a common factor of 3. And finally, let's think about numbers 10 and 25. So to look for a common factor, we have to think of a number that can be divided into two of these, both 10 and 25. And what I think of is number 5, because we know that 10 can be divided by 5, because 10 divided by 5 would give us 2 and also 25 can be divided by 5 which would give us 5 so that means that 10 and 25 have a common factor of 5 so when we want to transfer 4x plus 12 into something with brackets what we have to do is look at each part of the expression and find a common factor between them or in other words find a common factor between 4x and 12 so which numbers can be divided into both 4x and 12? Well, the first and most common common factor is 1 because we know that any whole number can be divided by 1 and that's the same with these two. So for example, the common factor means that we can divide 1 both into 4x and 12 because you know 4x divided by 1 would just equal 4x because it's just been divided by itself and the same by 12. 12 divided by 1 is equal to 12. And because each of these answers are whole numbers, then that means that 1 is a common factor. The next common factor between 4x and 12 would be 2, because if we try and divide 4x by 2, that's just dividing it into half, so 4x becomes 2x. And the same of 12 divided by 2 
we know that 6 times 2 is 12, so 12 divided by 2 is equal to 6, so that's another common factor. And the last common factor that would exist between 4x and 12 is 4, because we can divide 4x by 4, which would just give us 1x, or simply x by itself. And then 12 divided by 4 is equal to 3. So we can say then 4x and 12 have another common factor of 4. So that means that the common factors of 1, 2 and 4 are the only numbers that can divide into 4x and 12 and give us whole answers as we can see here. Just to give you an example of what is not a common factor, so let's just take a number, um, let's take 3 as an example. So what we have to do then is try and divide 4x by 3 and 12 by 3 and see if we can get whole numbers. So beginning with 4x, we know that if we divide 4x by 3, it's going to give us an answer with lots of decimal points. And if that's the case, then we know it's not going to be a whole number. Because if you want to try it in your calculator, if we divide 4 by 3, that's going to give us like 1.333x. And because that's the case, because we have a remainder, then it's not a whole number. But if we use 1, 2 and 4, we know that there's no remainder. And that means the answer is a whole number. Even if we try and divide 12 by 3, we know that 12 divided by 3 is 4, which in fact is a whole number, but to be a common factor, it has to be able to divide by both of the 4x and the 12, and because both of them aren't whole numbers, then they're not, well 3 is not a common factor. So once we've found the common factors of the two parts of the expression, how do we then get it into this form? Well what we have to do is choose one out of the three of these and the way that we decide which one is we always go with the highest common factor and in the case of one two and four four is the largest number so that means it's classed as the highest common factor so once we know which common factor we're going to use the way that we write this out is the common factor is the number that goes outside of the bracket and then the answers to what we divided by the common factor is what's inside the bracket. So we can see here that for our answer, 4 is the number that's outside the bracket, and x and 3 are the numbers that go inside the bracket. So to recap the process of factorising, what we want to do when we have an expression like this is think of all the common factors between 4x and 12, list them out, and then we choose the highest common factor, and then the highest common factor goes outside of the bracket, as we can see here, and inside the bracket, we put in each segment multiplied by the common factor. So 4x divided by 4, the common factor, gives us x, which goes in here. And then 12 divided by the common factor, 12 divided by 4, gives us 3. And that's what goes in that expression there. So what we'll do, we'll do a few more examples to improve our understanding of factorising and to get a hang of the whole process of putting something without brackets into an expression with brackets. So here we have an expression and we've been asked to factorise it and it reads 6x plus 9. So the first thing that we want to do is look for common factors in our expression. So that means a common factor between 6x and 9. So we know that 1 is always a common factor between numbers. So for example, we know that 6x divided by 1 will give us 6x and 9 divided by 1 is 9. So technically 1 is a common factor but we know that in order to factorise we have to look for the highest common factor so that means that we want to look for factors that are bigger than 1. So let's have a think. Let's try 2. We know that 2, well 6x divided by 2 gives us 3. But if we divide 9 by 2, that's going to give us 4.5. So we know that there's a remainder and it's not a whole number. Therefore, 2 is not a common factor. But 3, however, we know that we can divide 6x by 3 because 6 divided by 3 gives us 2. And 9 can also be divided by 3 to give us a whole number, because 9 divided by 3 is 3. So let's take each part of our expression and divide it by 3. So we know 6x divided by 3 gives us 2x, and 9 divided by 3 is equal to 3. Now once we have all of this information, we know that the highest common factor goes outside of the bracket, and then these two parts are what goes inside the bracket, so that means that we can then rewrite it as 3 and then the brackets and then we have 2x 
plus 3. And the way that we can check if this is correct is just by doing it the way we did before by multiplying out the bracket. And we know that to do that, what we want to do is multiply everything inside the bracket by the number outside. So if we do 3 multiplied by 2x, we know that gives us 6x, which we have here. And then also 3 multiplied by 3 gives us the 9. So doing that little check means that we know this is the correct form of factorising this expression. So I just forgot to put some of the steps in. So step one was look for common factors of the expression. Step two was choose the highest common factor. So in this case, the highest common factor between 6x and 9 is 3. And then finally, what we do is divide each part of the expression by the common factor. So we have 6x divided by 3, the common factor, which gives us 2x and 9 divided by 3 gives us 3. And then step 3, we write it in the factorised form by having the common factor outside the bracket and these two parts inside the bracket. So let's look at this one now. We've been asked to factorise the expression 6x minus 24. So what we have to do is look for common factors between 6x and also this minus 24 that we have here. Now actually, 6x and 24 they have a lot of common factors between them, so what I'm going to do is write each of the examples out by using each of the common factors just to show the significance of why we choose the highest common factor. So if we choose a common factor of 1, then the brackets would just look the exact same as this expression here, because if we multiply 6x by 1, it just gives us 6x, and if we multiply this minus 24 by 1, we still get minus 24. The next common factor we have is 2. So then what we do is to get the brackets is divide 6x by 2 which gives us 3x and then minus 24 by 2 which gives us minus 12. Next up we have a common factor of 3 so that means inside the brackets it's going to be 6x divided by 3 which gives us 2x and then minus 24 divided by 3 gives us minus 8 and then finally we have the highest common factor out of all of these which is 6. So that means inside the brackets it's going to be 6x divided by 6 gives us x and then minus 24 divided by 6 gives us minus 4. Now technically if we've done all of the factorising correct that means that each of these should be equal to each other because if we multiply out all of these brackets we should all end up with this same expression of 6x minus 24. But the reason that we choose the highest common factor is because each of these terms inside the brackets here can also be factorised even further. So looking at this one first, we know that in the brackets of 6x minus 24 can be factorised even further by taking 6 outside of the bracket. So there we have 6x minus 4, which is the exact same as this expression down here. Looking at this second one where we have the brackets of 3x minus 12, we know that looking at 3x and minus 12, we have a common factor of 3, which we can then take outside the brackets here and then that gives us this expression. And again, that's the exact same as this one and this one because two times three equals six and one times six is equal to six. So both of them are equal to this one. And then finally, if we look at this two X minus eight, we know that two X and minus eight have a common factor of two because two X divided by two gives us X and minus eight divided by two gives us minus four. So if we take the two outside of the brackets, we can express it in this form here as 3 multiplied by 2 again is 6 and then this x minus 4 here. So that's just proving that each of these ones, of regardless of which way we want to factorise or take out the common factor, they all equal the same as this down here. But the key thing to notice is, because we take the highest common factor down here of 6, that means inside the brackets we cannot factorise this any further. In other words, there isn't a common factor between x and minus 4. So this is the simplest form we can get it and factorising, and the same as all of these ones here as well. And one last thing I'll say on this example as well to be careful of is this negative sign here. Always be wary of the sign between the two terms and always take that into account. So as we can see here, each one of these has the minus as well. So we have to take that into account when we calculate or establish the common factors that we'll be using. So we're going to have a look at one final example, and this time we've been asked to factorise 5x squared plus 10x. Now this is a little bit more complicated than the previous examples but it's the exact same process which I'll show you right now. So the first thing that we want to do is look for a common factor between 5x squared and 10x or a term that can be divided both into 5x squared and 10x and be a whole number without any remainder. And the one thing that's different about this one is 
our previous examples, we only had to worry about numbers when we were factorised, but we know that each of these terms both contain numbers and variables, and because of that we have to take that into account when we are looking for a common factor. So we have to consider the numbers and the variables. So beginning with the numbers, the highest common factor that can go into 5x squared and 10x is 5, because we know that 5 can be divided into 5, that gives us 1, and 10 can be divided into 5, which gives us 2. So we're going to take 5 out first and rewrite the expression. So 5 goes outside the bracket, and that means that inside the bracket we have x squared, because that's like saying 5x squared divided by the 5, the common factor, gives us x squared. And then we also have a 2x, because that's just the 10x divided by the common factor of 5, which gives us 2x. Now, like I said in the previous slide, we always want to look inside the bracket and ask ourselves, can we factorise this any further at all? And the answer in this question is yes, and that's because of the shared variables between x squared and 2x. And what I mean by that is, both x squared and 2x both contain an x within the term, because you know that if we write x squared, that's the same as saying x times x. So because this term has an x, and this term also has an x, that means x is also a common factor, which means that we can take an x outside of the bracket and have it next to the 5. So that would mean that it would then look something like this. Outside the bracket we would have 5x, and then because we've taken an x outside of the bracket, that means that an x from each of these terms will disappear. So that means this x, for example, will disappear and then this one will disappear also. So that means inside the bracket we are left with just x plus 2 and that is as far we can go to factorising the expression of 5x squared plus 10x. Now one thing I said we want to do when we have a final answer is go back the way again to this just to check we have the same answer and the way that we can confirm this is is by multiplying what's outside the bracket by what's inside the bracket and making sure that we get this same answer here and we know that if we multiply 5x by x, that will give us 5x squared, which is what we have here. And then also, if we multiply 5x by 2, we are doubling 5x, which would give us 10x. So that means that this factorised expression is correct, and we've checked that by multiplying out, out the brackets again and confirming we get this answer. So let's summarise this lesson on common factor factorising. We now know that factorising is a process of turning an expression without brackets into an expression with brackets. And we do this by looking for the highest common factor between these terms. And a common factor is just a term or a number that can be divided into two other term or numbers without any remainder, so it produces whole numbers. And when we say the highest common factor, that just simply means the common factor which is the biggest number. And then once we've done this, once we've found the common factor, that's what goes outside the bracket, as we can see here. And then inside the bracket, we put the terms here divided by the highest common factor. And then once we've done that, we've got the form of a factorised expression. And what we can do to check if we have the right answer is we can go back and forward from the factorised form, so this one here example, back out to the multiplied out the brackets form. And doing that, we can validate or verify that we've gotten the right answer for the question. And then finally, I would just like to remind everyone to be careful with positive and negative signs. So always take into account which sign here we have between the terms. If it's positive, make sure and incorporate the positive sign inside the bracket and the same with a negative sign if that was the case. So I hope this video has been helpful to you in understanding common factor factorising. And if that's been the case, we would really appreciate liking the video and sharing it with your friends. And if you have any questions on this topic, be sure and drop it down below. And if you'd like to see more National 4 Maths content, be sure and subscribe to the channel Penguin Learning or head over to our website at penguin-learning.com. Thanks again for watching the video and I'll see you in the next National 4 Maths lesson.